There it goes. Okay, I don't know why my sound muting software decided to not be working, but it's working now. And I can hear myself on the computer, so we're good. Okay. All right. All good in the neighborhood. Uh, what else I got going on here? Clean this up. So I was not here on Monday. And uh, if you came looking for me, I'm sorry. Uh, if you were here on Friday, you would know that I wasn't going to be here today because I did did make that announcement, or on Monday, but I did make that announcement. Um because I went to go see my niece graduate from UNC Chapel Hill. And uh, that was an interesting, interesting thing. Um, uh, interesting in the fact that, well, at first it's a winter graduation, so it's much smaller than their standard, you know, uh, spring or summer graduation, which is much, much larger, I would imagine. I think there's about 400-ish people graduating. Um, and it was in the Smith Center, which was kind of cool to be in the Smith Center my first time being in there. You see all the banners and Michael Jordan's jersey number up on the wall and all kinds of stuff. But um, no, the thing that was interesting was that when they started to do the graduations, they had all of the doctoral graduates get up and they came across the stage and shook, you know, or they did elbow bumps, which, you know, I would have done the fist bump, they did the elbow bump, so whatever. Um, but then when it came time for the graduates to actually be recognized, you know, and they would come across the stage and get their diplomas and blah, blah, blah. They didn't do that. They just had each school of learning, like the Department of Nursing or whatever, they would have them stand up, everybody would clap, they sat down, then they went to the next school. And that was it. Nobody walked across the stage. <laughs> so that was a little odd. I, I thought that was a little interesting. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, that was a COVID thing, I'm sure, but uh, it was interesting to say the least. But anyway, I was, I was very happy to be there and see my niece graduate. And uh, that was kind of cool. And uh, that also means that I was not able to be here yesterday. Oh, UPS dude, he didn't come to my house, did he? I don't think so. I think he would have rung the bell if he had. Um, so I did not come in I was coming back on, on Monday from uh, Chapel Hill, and then yesterday um, I gave blood. So, yeah, I didn't do anything in the shop because, well, you're not supposed to really do anything after you give blood. You're not supposed to lift heavy things or do other stuff. And uh, I used that as an excuse to do nothing. Well, I didn't do nothing, but I didn't, I didn't do anything really in the shop yesterday. Um, just a couple little things, and that was about it. So... Uh, yeah, so basically nothing happened over the weekend in the shop and, uh, I'm okay with that. I think, uh, did I do anything else in here after Friday? Oh, I did do one thing. So let me go grab something here and I'll show you. Ugh. So I ordered a, a, a new set of knives for my jointer because, um, as I was planing a piece of wood the other day, it was scrap wood from a um, from a pallet, which is where this piece came from right here, uh, it, which is just pine or whatever. And I thought I had all the nails and stuff removed. There was one sneaky one in there. I missed it. I hit my joiner knives with it, which really left a nice little, little notch in the knife. And now when you run the piece of wood through, it, you get a nice flat surface except this little ridge where that where that notch is. So time for me to replace the blades, which it was probably time for me to replace them anyway. It's been probably a couple of years since I've replaced those blades and they don't last forever. So I did order some new ones. Luckily, I mean, I can get them on Amazon and they're not really expensive. Um, I'd buy them locally, but there's really no place around where I am that carries six and an eighth inch joiner blades. So, uh, I'd like to replace the whole thing with a, uh, with a Shelix head, but that's about 650 bucks that I don't have right now for that purpose. So that's not gonna happen. But as I was, uh, after I'd ordered the blades, I was like, oh, you know, I need to uh, go find my, my blade installing um, device. 
and I couldn't find it anywhere. I was looking all over, so I had to come out and kind of ransack my garage until I found them, which are these things right here. So this is my, my installing, well, there's actually two of them. So these are my installing devices. Um, the gentleman who um, made, who made, who I bought this from on uh, Craigslist? Yeah, I think it was Craigslist uh, a few years back. Um, really, really nice old gentleman, but he just never used it anymore. I actually didn't go there to buy that. I went there to buy a, um, a drum sander. I bought a, a Grizzly baby drum sander, like a 12 inch wide drum sander, which I ended up selling because it didn't quite work out in my shop. But when I was there, um, I noticed he had a jointer and I'm like, do you use that anymore? He's like, well, not really. I probably need to get rid of it. And I'm like, well, what would you want for it? <laughs> Cause I did not have a jointer at that time. And uh, he's like, I don't know, maybe 150 bucks. And I quickly said, don't go away. I'll be right back. I ran to the ATM, I grabbed some cash and I came back because 150 bucks for a six inch joiner with cast iron tables and such is a deal and a half. I think that version from Rigid, I just saw it the other day. Um, in fact, let me do a quick search. I just saw one the other day. I think they maybe have them back in stock. It's weird because they, um, they don't always show up in stocks in places. Uh, you know, Rigid is kind of like a Home Depot-ish brand but um, let's see, Rigid Tools. Okay, Home Depot, I'm gonna just go to Home Depot because I'm gonna see where they're gonna buy it from there. Um, I just wanna see what they have it priced at, if they have it priced. Do they have it priced? And there it is, but it's not, come, finish showing up the information, come on, fill in. Takes forever. Um, okay. Wow, you don't need to know where I live. Yeah, okay, so here we go. $800 for a jointer that probably is not as nice as this one. Um, in some respects, it's not quite as sturdy and it's uh, some of the materials are probably a little bit more flimsy now and such. Um, it has a steel cabinet and such, but anyway, 150 bucks was a bargain and a half for that jointer. And he had made these little, this little tool for installing the blades because installing the blades on on the joiner is kind of it's kind of tricky um, there is a basically a round cylindrical tube that the blades slide into and there's little bolts and there's like four little four little nuts that you have to loosen and they they tighten against that blade so what you have to do is you have to slide the blade into the slot along this cylinder. You slide the blade in, and then you have to tighten these little, these little um, nuts up to kind of wedge it and clamp it in place. Well, the problem is holding that blade at the perfect height and keeping it even all the way across the surface is really, it's a pain in the rear if you don't have the right tool. So that's what this is for. This is a piece of straight, um, I think this is aluminum, but it's thick bar aluminum, which very straight though. Um, I mean, it's, it's really straight. So, and on the bottom, what he did was he installed magnets. So there's three, four magnets on here and same on this one. So what you do is you put these on the bed. So these magnets rest on the bed and then this magnet at the end, so there's one at each end, you do one on each side. So basically what that does is the magnets hit that blade and hold it in place. And you have one on each side and they're the exact Steve. same dimension. Set. So it holds Steve. it in place and then when you tighten it down, you'll have a nice flat flush blade because that blade needs to sit at a perfect height where it is at the same height as your outfeed table. Your infeed table lowers down and up depending on how thick of a cut you want, but they, the outfeed table needs to be perfectly flush with the blade. So he made this little device right here, and now when my blades come in, which I think they're due to be arriving today, I can, uh, I can go check it out and install them. I just have to find the little wrench that fits in the slot that loosens the nuts, and I haven't done it in a while, but it should be, should be pretty good. Uh, let me get my windows in place here because I did hear somebody pop in. Said, what you making? Ah, 
So, uh, so today, what I'm doing today is, uh, what am I making? Well, besides a mess, which is what I'm usually making, today I'm making uh, bow ties in the underside of my cable top here. So this is a cherry slab that is going to be a, uh, this is going to be a coffee table. And in order for it to be a coffee table, I have to do a couple of things. One is I'm gonna be filling all these cracks on here because these go all the way through. Um, I'm gonna be filling these with um, epoxy. And that is not what I'm doing today though. But I will get these all filled with epoxy so that it is nice and flat and flush. I'm just gonna make black epoxy. Um, and then I'm going to install bow ties across these cracks. Now this is the top of the table right here. So this is gonna be the top. It's, it's not too long. You can see it's about this long right here. So it's not crazy long, but it's gonna be a cool kind of table. But on the bottom uh, right here, you can see those cracks go all the way through. And my thought was today what I wanna do is um, install some bow ties in the bottom of this so that I can stabilize these cracks and then I will decide if I want decorative bow ties up top or not. Um, this is pretty thick. This is like a, almost an inch and a half thick. And in order to do an effective bow tie, I need something that is gonna have some depth to it. A, a thin bow tie, like something like this thick. I mean, that's a bow tie, right? Or, or a Dutchman or a butterfly, whatever you wanna call them, they're all the same thing. But, I mean, if I, I could install it on here, right, like that, and it would come across. And the whole, the whole premise behind it is that because it's a wedge shape, it holds that wood and keeps that wood from pulling apart because the wedge wedges in place and won't let it slide through. But I need something thicker than this, probably about the same thickness as this. So this is, uh, this is just plywood, um, but three-quarter ply. Probably need some three-quarter ply thickness I'm not gonna use plywood because that would look trash. But something along that lines, because this is a thick table, you need something that can actually hold the force of the table together. Uh, you don't want it splitting apart. So I'm gonna be using a jig on the bottom. Now, I talked about this on Friday. Um, the difference between a hand cut bow tie and a template cut bow tie. So this is a bow tie template. I don't know if you can see that, there you go. Um, so this is a template for making bow ties. It has lots of different, different sizes and such. But the problem with this is, I won't say the problem, the, the issue with this is that the corners are round because you're using a drill bit, or not drill bit, but a router bit to get in here and you need to be able to turn those corners and you're basically sending a guide bearing I actually have my little template thing here. So you've got a guide bearing that's either running through here to cut the bow tie and it runs along in here, or you've got a larger bearing that fits over this and that's what you use to cut the, um, the pocket with. But no matter the case, it leaves a rounded corner because, well, this is round and you're going around a, a template, so. Are you putting the bow ties on to secure the table on a fraud style as well? Well, so uh, if I'm doing it for support or for style. So I'm going to be doing it for both. <laughs> I, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to do it for both. I'm definitely putting them in the bottom and the ones in the bottom are definitely for structural purposes. They are to secure the wood, to keep it from moving, everything else. I will decide after I put those in, I'm gonna decide if I'm gonna put some bow ties in the top for aesthetic purposes. Those will not need to be as deep because I'll have thicker ones in the bottom. So the ones in the bottom will definitely be doing the structural work. Um, the ones in the top will, I mean, they'll provide some structure, but they're gonna be more for decorative purposes. So I'll probably make them thinner, like something more like this, instead of, these are kind of fat and chunky looking. Um, but for purposes of securing the wood, they're just fine. Um, the other thing is that I have to go deep with these things. So I gotta figure out, 
So here's the bit that I use. Let me get on this camera right here. So here's the bit that I use. It's a little um, eighth inch bit that with a quarter inch shank and it fits perfectly inside of this like this. It'll fit inside and run inside of this little template bearing. And then that's how you make, when you're using a template like a template guide like this, it runs inside of there and cuts your material out. And then you use the same thing, but you put this little collar on it. It's got a little collar. So you put the collar on there, that spaces it over by an eighth of an inch. And now you run that inside to make the pocket. I always get that confused. Um, and uh, yeah, that's how you make it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually get a piece of scrap wood, just do a test, because I wanna make sure I do this right. And, um, cause I haven't used this in a while, but I figure I don't care if the, if the not as pretty ones are on the bottom, cause it's the bottom of the table and no one's gonna know. I still haven't sanded this down hundred percent. So it still has, um, the marks from the router when I flattened it. Um, that's what I did Friday was I put this in my flattening jig and you can see, see these little vertical lines. So that's from flattening it. Uh, what else have I made? Um, generally, um, like right now I'm just kind of in Christmas mode. So I'm making things for Christmas gifts, but generally what I make is uh, sewing machine bases, not exciting, but kind of fun and pretty lucrative for me. So I, uh, I create for antique, uh, uh, antique sewing machines like this, and I make bases for them. And there's a, uh, a very, very, very large community of antique sewing machine users who need bases. So I kind of sit inside of a really nice little niche where there's very few people making the bases and very few people, even fewer people making quality bases. So that's generally what I make um, in my shop. This is a side project that I have uh, that uh, I've had this piece of wood for years and wanted to make a table out of it. And so I finally decided to give myself a break from making sewing machine bases and work on this table. So this is kind of my project that I'm working on right now. Um, so basically for this thing, all I have to do is put the bow ties in uh, then I need to get some epoxy. I'm going to dye the epoxy black. It's not going to be clear epoxy. Um, well, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. It is cool. It's, it's kind of a neat thing. And I, I like working with people and with their old machines and stuff. I kind of, it's like I'm providing a service to them because they can't go out and buy one at a store because they just don't make them anymore. They're really old. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, I'm gonna put this on here, make some legs and uh, everything else. Oh, and I gotta follow, thank you. Absolutely, thank you for following, I appreciate that. All right, so plan today, I'm gonna to make bow ties. I have a bunch of walnut here, so when I get ready to use this, this is all very straight grain walnut that I'll be using for the bow ties or the Dutchman or the butterflies or whatever you wanna call them. But I am going to do a test like I said, I want to make a test. I'm going to grab a couple of pieces of scrap wood. Actually, you know what? This is an off cut from the table. I cut this off the end of the table. So I'm going to put a bow tie in here. And uh, we can do that over here on the workbench. So I'm going to put a bow tie in here. I just need to find a piece of wood that I want to use it's paying. for... It's uh, it's the main wood. Th this is cherry right here. So this was a cherry slab that I bought a couple of years ago. Uh, my local wood place, which unfortunately is no longer there, had a stack of these things when I walked in one day and I kind of went, ooh, those are nice. And he, he's like, oh, here, I'll make you a deal on one. So he did, which I said, thank you very much. So I got a deal on it. And uh, I had it in my garage for a couple of years now, just letting it, um, letting it sit because it needs to, Dry out. That's a little pretty. I want something. I need an ugly piece of wood for this. Uh, here we go. All right, here's another scrap. I will use this scrap to cut my bow tie. And then I will cut the pocket into here. 
And I'm just gonna do a test first because I don't wanna cut into my table yet until I know exactly what I'm doing. And the main tabletop. The, the main tabletop is, uh, this, this is cherry. That's, this is an off cut of this main table right here. The legs are gonna be made out of walnut. So it'll have walnut legs and the cherry top. But the cool part is that it's a crotch piece of wood. So you've got really, really interesting feathering of the grain that runs basically right up from where the crotch was. This is, here's, this is the crotch basically. But I didn't, uh, I didn't want to keep this because there's some checking in the end here. Checking is cracks that go to the very end of the board. And those would be really hard to secure. So I basically cut it off so that I could get rid of the checking. It would have been nice to keep this, but it's okay. It still works without it but it's gonna give its life for a test project. So that will be nice. Let me get this out of the way. And I will use this, like I said, I will make my test piece on here. I'm just trying to find out where I wanna do this on. This is a good surface right here. So I'll do it on this end and I might be able to just clamp this down. I probably will. I'll just clamp this down to my table surface right here. And then what I do with this is basically double stick tape this to the surface so it doesn't move. So when I'm running the router around in there, um, it, it gives me a really nice, nice secure fit on there. The big thing about doing things with a template, doing the pocket is easy. You just run inside and clean it all out and that's the easy part the hard part is actually making the bow tie because you have to keep this bit exactly on the edge if you push into it if you let it drift into the wood at all you ruin the bow tie so you have to exactly follow this cutout in order for it to be perfect fit in your thing i'm just cleaning this out i got a little gunk in here hang on a second um, but anyway, yeah, you need to follow this template exactly when you're doing the bow tie. Um, so I'm going to make the bow tie out of this. This is just scrap cherry as well, but um, I've stained it. So it's got some stain on here, so it'll look nice. But I will make the bow tie out of that. I will make the pocket where the bow tie goes in here just as a, uh, a test. And let me get some stuff that I'm going to need for that. So two things you really need, or you should have. Um, one is probably some double-sided tape to hold your template down if you're gonna use these. These are the easiest way to do bow ties. Um, hand cutting bow ties can be done, but it is a little bit more tricky. It takes a little bit more time. You have to use chisels, um, and it's just a little bit more of an exacting process. The difference being that you get a much cleaner, tighter, looking bow tie. Um, this is my router. It's just a small palm router. So it's my little, it's, it's a Colt uh, made by Bosch. So it's just a small little handheld router, which is really nice to use for this stuff. But I'm gonna take it out of its base because this is much easier to do if you have a, uh, a plunge base, which is what this is. So I will put that into plunge base and I need to insert before I do that. So hang on a second. So setup on this is a little bit of a pain. So Porter Cable has kind of like a standard thing. Porter Cable is a tool company, if you didn't know. Um, and they came up with basically this design on for the bottom of routers where it accepts templates or, or tip guide bearings and it's kind of a standardized size now so so this little thing unscrews cherry wood is very hard um i mean it's not as hard as oak it's not as hard as um you know maple um but in general it's pretty hard wood it's not you know not even close to something like 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 pine or something like that, where it's really gonna soft and dent. Um, this stuff holds up really well. Most of the bases that I make for the sewing machines are made from cherry. Um, it's very easy to work with. 
Um, it has beautiful wood grain. I mean, cherry is one of the, probably one of the favorite woods for woodworkers, furniture makers. Ugh, this thing's gonna be a pain. All right, I'm putting this collar in here. There we go. I'm trying to get it secured so that it sits inside. Ugh. All right, so I've got the uh, collar mounted in the bottom. So you can see that's actually mounted to this bottom plastic plate here. And then when I insert my drill Same. bit or my Same. router bit. I don't think we have cherry from where I am from. You don't have cherry? Where are you from that we, we would know if you have cherry or not? Cherry's pretty prevalent, but it, I mean, if you're, especially where I live, I mean, I'm in the Northeast, but you can get cherry pretty much anywhere in the United States, but it doesn't necessarily grow everywhere. Oh, New Zealand. Oh, well, <laughs> you might have a problem getting cherry, but you probably can find something that's in the cherry family um, because it's, it's a pretty big family for that particular wood. Uh, much like mahogany, where mahogany is actually like, I think there's like a, a couple of hundred species of mahogany. And I think cherry has a pretty large family tree as well. So um, you might be able to find something similar to it. All right, I got to get this thing fit in here. It's always tricky. All right. Now, the issue with this is getting the plunge set to the depth that I need. I can lock this in. So because it's a plunge router, I can now route this to um, whatever depth I need. So let's see what we've got here for plunge depth. So I've got to move my stop right here. So let's see how deep we can take this. Um, I might have to get my larger router involved. I don't want to. So that is the full depth that I can go here and looking with my little ruler here, that would give me, oh, okay. Well, that's not bad, that's three quarters of an inch. So I could route up to three quarters. I think I'm gonna go a little less than that. Um, so I'm gonna raise this up just a hair, maybe, hello. So what I will do is I will set my stop because I've got a stop over here. I can actually change this stop so that it comes down a little bit. All right. So let me see how deep that goes. So all I'm doing is setting the depth that this is going to travel. So that is uh, still a little high there. Am I kidding? Yeah. So I'm going to come up a little bit more. I don't need it quite that deep. So there's a stop guide over here and I can take this and just lower it down and it hits a block over here. So as I'm plunging down, it will only plunge so far until it hits that. And then that controls how deep I want to go. So that's pretty good right there because my material that I'm going to be cutting out of, I don't want to go deeper than this. Um, because I don't want it to, I don't want it to be my hole to be deeper than the wood that I'm going to put in there because then this would not sit over the top. You want this to be proud of the top. You don't want this to fit all the way inside. You want it to stick up a little bit and then you clean it off with a hand plane when you're done. But that looks pretty good. Uh, okay. So I've got my depth set on there. Um, I think I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this little medium one right here and I'm just going to put that right inside there, which means I need to put some tape on here. Um, it's really important to clean all your surfaces off. Use my pant leg uh, when you're getting ready to put the tape on so that you get a really good bond. And I'm just looking to see where I'm going to get a pencil and just mark. Oops. I'm going to mark the inside of this so I can see where the, uh, where I'm going to, Put this and then where I want to. Uh... Okay. 
So that's where it's going to go, and I can put tape on the outside of that. Question is, do I use the bearing to cut this out? See, this is where I get confused. <laughs> so I have two sides. Luckily, I have two sides that I can use here. So if I get screwed up, because one of them you use the bearing, one of them you don't. And I think for the pocket, you actually use the bearing to cut this out. So the bearing goes on to here, like that. Put the bearing on. I'm gonna put some double side tape down right here. And then we can uh, find my scissors real quick. It makes my life easier if I can just cut the tape with scissors instead of tearing it, you get cleaner edges. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Where'd I put my scissors? Of course, you know, being able to find your scissors makes life a lot easier too. And I toss mine around all the time. All right, here they are. Well, I just have a pair of shop scissors. They're not, they're nothing exciting. They're just little shop scissors, but they do make things like this a little easier. So I'm gonna put a piece right here. I mean, the big thing is you do not want the template to shift. You need it to stay exactly in place while you're routing because you're, you're basically concerned about the, the, the crispness of the lines around the edges. I mean, that's especially true for the, uh, when you're making the actual bow tie cut, when you're just doing the pocket, it's not quite, I mean, you can you still want those crisp edges, but around the inside, you're just going to be moving it around and removing material anyway. All right. I'm going to put one little more piece up here just to hold this in place. And then I will remove all of the sticky stuff. Okay, let me find my marking knife here because that makes life a little easier. Once again, looking for my stuff. Uh, I just had that marking knife too. Oh, there it is. Okay, so really the easiest thing I find is I just kind of go for a corner here and try to get the corner to kind of pull up a little bit. And then we just pull the backing off and then off we go. Um, I know there are people who actually just use scotch tape, like double-sided scotch tape, which works. It just depends on what you're doing. Um, this is like a paper tape, um, it's, it's, but it's really thin and works really well, and I've had no problems with it. I really like it. I'm almost out. I need to order some more, but this stuff is really great for holding down templates and stuff. Um, I have thicker stuff, which is basically like carpet tape, but I don't like to use it as much because it's thick and I like my templates to be as close to the wood as possible. All right, I'm gonna to try to line this up. I mean, right there. All right, so you can see that this template is now secured to the wood. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a, a uh, clamp and I'm gonna clamp this to my workbench so that I don't have any slipping or anything. So I'm just gonna put a big clamp over here on the side. And then this piece will not move at all, so that's pretty good. And what I will do is I'm not gonna mill this whole thing out at once. I'll go down a little bit, clean it out, get all the pieces out, then I'll plunge a little further, clean out some more, um, and just kind of work it all around that way. All right, I'm going to put on my headphones, move my bench out of the way here, and I'm gonna move my computer way over here so it doesn't get completely dusty because this is kind of messy. So I don't want to get all of that in my computer. All right, let me plug in my router. And oh, yeah, I'm good, okay. Just making sure, I'm gonna turn off my heater back here. It's chilly here. Uh, you all are going in New Zealand. You're going into summer, we're, or you're in summer now, where we're in winter, so a little bit chillier here. All right, there's my template. There's my bearing. I'll just make a pocket just like this. It'll ride around like that, and then I'll clean out all the surface stuff from inside. Um, let me put my speed up on here. Okay. All right.
let's let's see how this works. So I'm going to clean this out a little bit because it gets full of sawdust and it gets hard to see what areas actually need to be clean. Um, and this is only, like I said, partial depth. This isn't the whole depth. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and clean out the rest of these little nooks and crannies in here because I got a few pieces left and then I can plunge deeper. But now I can actually see uh, which areas have been done and which haven't. that up. I think I got that pretty well cleaned out. All right. Hey, well, thanks for stopping in. I really appreciate you being here. Um, yeah, come back and see me. I'm on uh, pretty regular Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So come back. Maybe I'll have these installed by then. But uh, absolutely, thank you for stopping in. I really appreciate it. All right. And in the meantime, I'm going to move forward with this. I've got a partial pocket done now. Um, and I'm going to show this off to the camera here. So basically, it you can see that it's offset the pockets offset from the template because I have that spacer on that little spacer ring on the, uh, the template bearing. So it gives a little bit of an offset and uh, we're going to go deeper now so we can get a much deeper cut on here. Let me get this secured to the table again. And now I'll plunge a little bit deeper and off we go. Let me turn this around. There we go.
It does help because all that dust gets trapped underneath between the template and the plate here. So it does help to clean it out every now and then just like I said, to see what you're doing and also just to give it room to, to move and work. So I got a few areas around this bottom here and a couple of little pieces here that I just need to clean those out. And then we can do the final depth plunge on here. I'm not going, I'm doing this about three passes because it just keeps things cleaner that way. Okay, and clean it out. And then I think one more pass and we'll have the depth done. Okay. One little area here in the corner to get cleaned out. I missed a couple little pieces. So I'm gonna move this down to hitting that. All right. The one thing I forgot was that when I set the depth, you have to remember that you have to account for the depth of the uh, the depth of the template, and I did not do that. So I've got right now um, about three eighths of an inch thick, which is still pretty thick. Um, I don't know. Let me see if I move this out of the way. How much more I can get out of this? Um, so I can't really get too much more depth out of this stop, I don't think. I am, all, well, no, I'm not bottomed out. Hang on a second, let me move this out of the way. Let's try this one. That might be it for my depth on here. Hello, thank you. Yeah, cause you don't wanna hit, that's about the bottom I'm getting here. Am I hitting that? So I'm pretty much bottomed out on depth right there. So I can try this one and see if I can just get a little bit more depth out of here. Yeah, that's a little bit more. All right. Yeah, it's really full of dust, so I need to keep cleaning this out so it has room to move.
Okay, that gave us a very nice clean pocket. Got one little place that I can clean up with a chisel here. I mean, you're gonna get maybe sometimes a couple little tiny pieces that just got missed, but for the most part, drag this down. Uh, that shouldn't be like that. I'm gonna hit this edge one more time because it just should be a little tighter in this corner right here or on that edge. So hang on a second. It may have been just a little dust or dirt on the template that didn't let it get all the way over. So let me hit that one more time. Okay, that should be clean. And it is. Okay. Nice. Clean this out with my vacuum real quick. Like I said, any, any little tiny nibs or anything on the bottom, you can always just get a chisel and just kind of make sure that you clean up any little spots on the bottom. And let me unlatch this and then we can pop the template off. Ugh. And I will show you what our pocket looks like, like that. So you can see we've got a really nice bow tie pocket now. All right, and uh, I'll take this tape off. So that is that worked out to be pretty deep. Oh, that's it's a little thin on the edge there. I don't know how I missed these edges a little bit. Um, but a trick to putting the bow ties in is that you can bevel the actual bow tie and allow some room for glue to kind of run up the sides. You don't want it to be the exact same shape. You want it to actually have, like if you've got a straight wall, you want to have a little bit of a bevel so that glue can get up in that little space right between it. Um, so it basically wedges into the spot. All right, so now I can take my donor wood here. And this, just for reference, Let's do a little measurement to see how thick this is. So this ended up being, oh, oh, that's where that little screw came from. Oh, is that where that little screw came? Oh man, a little tiny screw came out of here and I was like, oh, I need to save this and keep it for something. I think it came over here. I think I put it in my little drawer here. I found this little tiny screw. I was like, I don't know where this is, but I just found out where this little tiny screw goes. Did I pick it up? I did not. It goes in the bottom and holds these two pieces of metal together. That's kind of stupid. Okay. Anyway, I'll be repairing this. Oh, shoot. Really, I did not just drop this little tiny screw right here. Holy crap. Where'd it go? Wow. Okay. So I had the little tiny screw there. Just, whew, man. <laughs> That was not good. It's really tiny. I mean, like really stinking tiny. And I'm gonna have to go get a really teeny tiny screwdriver to put this in here. And then I can keep going to the other side there. All right, give me one, one, one quick second here. Let's take a quick time out. I'll be right back. I need a really tiny screwdriver. Hang on. All right, I'm hopeful this is small enough. That's kind of weird, but I, well, I'm glad I held on that little screw. I was like, I found this little screw on my workbench. I don't know where it came from. Well, now I know. All right, crisis averted. Okay, now I can 
zero this out and see how deep we are here. Is that working? Oh, shoot. Okay, hang on. Crisis not averted. My little thing fell off the side here, which means I need to take this one all the way out. Loosen this one. Nothing's ever easy. That's what we say. Okay, I need to push this. There we go. This little piece goes here. This goes over, comes back under. This way, there we go. All right, let me see if that works. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Good grief. Good grief. All right, let's try this again. Zero. Yay. Okay, 0.57. Now my wood here is much thicker than that. It's 0.79, so it's a little over three quarters of an inch, um, which is fine. All right, so now what I need to do is take this little bearing off of here, and it I'm going to put up on my fence so I don't lose it. I need to put this onto this piece of wood like this, and then I'm going to very carefully cut along the edge without pushing the router into the wood. Um, you got to be really careful that that router bit does not wander into the wood because, well, you're pretty much hosed. Now, I could have done this completely backwards. I can't remember if you use the collar for the, I think you use the collar for doing the, the actual, I think that's the way it works. But we're going to find out. So I need to... Well, I'm not going to go through this bit, through the entire table, which is good. I can actually cut it out on the bandsaw. So I can use this, secure this down to my table. First of all, let me do that. Get this secured down. Keep it from moving. Okay, then I can get some more double-sided tape on here. I'm just going to draw just so I know where this is going to cut. And then I can affix my double-sided tape on the outsides of that. And, uh, do, 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 do. all right, let me, uh, let me put some double-sided tape on here, if I can find it. And then we will make another plunge cut, but this time, uh, I'm not sure if I want to go all the way to the final depth. I haven't used this in a while, and so I always kind of second guess myself when I start doing this stuff because I don't want to make any mistakes. And, but I know the biggest thing that you have to think about when you're doing a template like this for routing is that you do not want that template to move one little bit. So I'm going to make sure I do a good job with the double sided tape here because that will. Keep this thing locked in place. I can put one here and I'll put one on the other side. Put one here. Okay. Let me peel the tape off of here. This has a paper backing and sometimes a little hard to get off, but you know, persistence. Usually if I use my marking knife and just kind of drag it along the one of the corners, I can get it to peel up. I say usually, but sometimes it makes a liar out of me. There we go. Just need to catch that corner. And if you really push it down and make sure it's stuck to that corner, you usually have a little bit better time peeling up an edge. So like I said, this stuff's a little bit of a pain, but it works so well that I really, I don't want to try anything else because I'm just so happy with this stuff. I think I got this from Uline. Uline has a lot of different stuff, but I think this stuff actually came from Uline. So I'm gonna line this up with my pencil mark. Doesn't have to be exact, but um, there we go. 
All right, I'm gonna press this down on that double-sided tape because you really just do not want this to move at all. All right, I think we are good. I got that pressed down and we are ready, I think. I'm gonna sit down for this one. So I really wanna be very exact with this because like I said, you have to stay and usually I start right in a corner and the other thing is you don't want to be tipping. You don't want this tipping. So I think this template's a little tippy and I, that's not because of the template. I'm gonna put a little piece, I'm gonna move this back a little bit and then put a piece of wood underneath it. I'm gonna put a piece of wood underneath this end of the template to keep it from shifting and tipping. I don't need it for the actual routing, but if I put it under here, it will keep the template from wobbling. Uh, maybe a little thicker piece. Let's see if I can find some other scraps that are a little thicker than that. Just some three quarter inch material. Um, that looks good. That looks good. So I have some three quarters stock and I want this to just be really stable. This isn't a problem if you're doing a large surface, but because I'm doing something kind of small here, I just want to make sure that this is not going to tip. So this keeps it, the template from being stable because it was hanging over. All right, it's go time. Uh, let's see if I can ruin it. Now that's why I'm doing this on scrap because it's scrap and if it gets messed up, I don't really care. I'm gonna go right into the corner and I'm gonna work my way around and then we will see what happens with that. Okay, we'll see how this feels. <laughs> I have no idea. Let's see what it looks like. I'm going to run this through one more time now that I've cleaned out some of that stuff. I'm going to clean off this thing as well. Oh, that's hot. Wait, it's on here. I can't remember. Oh, this way. All
All right. So that is the bow tie cut. Now, it didn't cut it all the way out because um, it did not cut through the entire thickness. Uh, let me show you what it looks like. So that's the bow tie cut right there. Um, as far as the size though, I think I figured this out correctly. So here is, here's the pocket. And if I just measure, like we'll just measure across the pocket, right? So this pocket is 3.205. And if I measure this bow tie right here is 3.177. So pretty darn close. So I'm gonna cut this out on the bandsaw now. I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna go over to the band saw and I'm gonna set up a fence. I, I can figure out how thick this is. All right, so I can just basically check this with my thing. So five, five, five. So I'm 0.555 inches. Uh, let me set up a camera. Let's do number two. I'll set this up for the uh, for the saw over here so you can see me cut this out. So that would be right here. And we'll zoom it in. That's my heater, which is not turned on right now, but does a nice job of keeping me toasty. So let me get the, uh, everything set up here. Um, da -dum -dum -dum. I need to take this table off of here. So this is just a, uh, a little sliding tabletop that I made for this. Comes off, has little runners on the bottom of it. You can see there's runners on the bottom. But I'm gonna set this off to the side and then I will set a fence up and we will make a cut on this board. Okay, hang on a second. I need this and this. Here's my fence, which I have a mag fence. So it just sits on here and then I'll figure out how much of this I want to cut out. Cut it. Let's see. Gotta look and see which one of these edges is square on here. One of these faces should be square. That's not the square edge. Is that the square edge? That's the square face. Okay. So I'm going to cut it this way. And I think if I just run this line down through here, kind of lets me know I'm just dragging this across. So I can see exactly how thick that is, where I need to make the cut. And then I can line up my saw. So let me get a line up here on the top too, just so I can see this. So I'm just going to, it's not as good as a marking knife, but it'll do for right now. Actually, I'm going to darken that up with some pencil so I can see what I'm doing here. So I'm just, I'm just marking a line on here and I've got a line in the front right here. So I know how thick I need to, make this cut and I can set the, uh, the saw up. I can actually set the saw to be just a little thicker than that. I don't have to go right exactly to it. I can go a little deeper than that and I can actually hand cut this to finish it. But I'm gonna lock my fence in here real quick. And see, that's a little off. So hang on a second. I usually uh, use a sliding square. I can find one. I will usually use my sliding square to um, set my, my fence up to be true, but I can't find my sliding square right now because I'm a total, total mess. Can't find my square. Uh, I tell you what, I am a mess. Where's my sliding square? And why can't I find it? All right, well, I'm gonna eyeball it. How about that? We'll just eyeball this. We're just gonna eyeball it. See if we can get this close here. That 
close. That's close. All right. We're just going to eyeball it. I'm going to use my finger to drag that line across here and just give me a reference. So just a, a guide for me to cut through that. It goes to right here. So I just basically need to cut about that far across. All right, let's see what we get. Let me put up my dust collection in here. You never know. This is just a test cut, so it's not the end of the world if it's not perfect. Just kind of testing things out. Okay, so um, I went a little deeper than I needed to, so you can see, whoop, here we can put it over here. I'll give you a close up. So I went just a little deeper than I needed to, so you can see there's a little shelf right here. I can clean that up with a chisel. I could put that in a clamp and clean up with a chisel. I really just want to test my fit to see how this works. And it looks like it fits pretty well in here. So that fits pretty nicely in there. Um, I'm going to clean this up and then we will drive this home and I'll show you why it is and is not a great option. So give me just a second to uh, clean up some of this tape and stuff. And I'm going to get a sharper chisel out to clean up the edge of this. So let me, uh, let me walk around to the front, grab a sharp chisel just to clean these edges up off of here. Uh, let's see, this one right here is sharp. And this actually should be pretty simple to do because um, there's just a really thin piece of wood on the edge here. So I'm just gonna put this in my clamp here. A second, let me just do this. That makes life easier. All right, clamp this in. And then put this over here a little bit on the side. I'm just gonna basically just kind of clean off this little piece here and make sure that it's kind of just running flush to the rest of the face. Like that. Nice. I just keep flipping around and cleaning these little edges off. But I only want to cut this little protrusion off of here. So I don't want to cut anything else off of here. I'm just going to make sure that I'm not else. Okay. 
and a little bit right here, which is kind of a pain. But if you remember, I said that you can actually, and it's probably a good idea to try running this from the other direction here. It's a good idea to um, kind of shave off the edges of your of your bow tie and have it angled a little bit so there's a place for the glue to go. I'm not gluing this necessarily, but if I was, it would be no problem for me to, now this is in grain, so it's kind of a pain in the rear. Just gonna work this like we know what we're doing here. Yeah, you say this is a sharp chisel, so not too much of an issue here. What I don't want to do is have this hit the um, the cut edge that the router cut because that could damage the profile that you'll see up top. You don't want that. Tear this off right there. There we go, nice and clean. And I'm just going to keep working around the corners here until I get this all cleaned up. Which seems like a lot for just a test, but I just want to see what it's going to look like. Now, the, the big thing with this stuff is it, it's not a perfect fit. It's close, but it is not a perfect fit. And so generally, what you're going to want to do is have a little bit of a, a sawdust mixture made up so that you can run some like sawdust and glue. So when you glue this up, you're going to get squeeze out on the top. And what you want to do is work a little bit of sawdust into that, you know, a matching species of sawdust, preferably. And then that will fill the gaps. And then you will be able to uh, kind of mask the imperfection of the cut. Because it's not going to be perfect. It's, it's going to be off just a little bit. I guarantee it's going to be off just a little bit. Not much, but enough that, you know what, if you're, doing a, if you're doing a really fine piece of furniture, you probably don't want that much off of there. So let me get the rest of this cleaned up here. Might have to turn this around so I can hit it from the other direction. Go, and if I bust that corner off, it doesn't matter because it's going to be the bottom. But anyway. So there is a nice thick bow tie cut with our jig. I did remember the right way to do it. And still got tape on here. Um, I'm going to bring over the pocket that we cut out for this. And like I said, the reason I can do this on the bottom of the table is because honestly, it's the bottom of the table. I don't really care. But this is a very thick piece of wood going in here, which should provide some structural stability for what we're doing here. Now, I was not going to hammer this all the way home, but I'll tell you what, let me, uh, let me put, I'm going to put a little glue in here and just uh, kind of knock this thing in. I'll just paint some glue around the edges here and. And really what you want to do is get some in the bottom, get it around the sides. Uh, I'm not going to do much here, but I'm just going to do enough. I need more than that. Okay. And I'm just going to paint this and I'm going to do it around the edges. Now you don't want so much glue that it's not going to seat because you don't, you know, glue takes up space. So you don't want to have this thing just completely caked with glue that you can't get it to, to slide in there. But the glue does add a, act as a little bit of a lubricant too to get things, if it's tight, it'll get things kind of moving in there. All right, so now I'll take this, put it into this. It will knock it in. 
And then I actually have a little bit of, uh, I'm gonna put some glue around the edge here. I've got a little bit of space here. This was not the neatest, cleanest one I've ever done. Um, not the neatest and cleanest, but I'm gonna take some glue around the edge here. And I actually have, I have some dust that I can put on there, believe it or not, because I was sanding on my, uh, let's just come off of here. Oh, shoot, dropping things, that's not good. Okay, this comes off like this, I think. Get this off, there we go, all right. I was sanding with my belt sander and I was sanding, this is, uh, I'm gonna clean some of this off. Um, this was, I was sanding this cherry table. And so I actually have a lot of dust that came off of this table. So I'm gonna put some of this on here. So this is basically cherry dust and I'm just gonna push it into the edges and that will kind of, it's mixed with the glue and it will take up those void areas. Hello, dust, dust, come on. There we go. So it's gonna fill in these voids and give us a nice clean appearance when everything is done. Now, I, this is scrap and I don't really care, but I wanna see what it looks like you know, with that filled in, working that dust into the corners there to make it look much better. Because that's the one thing that makes your, your bow ties not look great is if you have voids. If you have voids in there um, around the edges, it just kind of looks amateurish. Um, but uh, anyway. All right, I'm gonna I save this dust so that when I get ready to do the ones around the top and stuff, it will be it will be spiffy. I'm gonna vacuum this up. I don't need it to be uh, so neat. And I just want to see if I missed a spot, which I did right over here. I missed a spot. Um, I'm going to go get a little bit more dust so I do not want a void. I'm going to put just a little bit of glue right here in this area. And when it mixes with that dust, it creates like a perfectly colored paste to fill it in. And when it hardens, it's just going to look like the wood. You're not going to know it. It's basically like perfect wood filler. Um, there are some people who mix in some other wood dust, wood colors in there, just to kind of, it makes a, a little bit of a variety in the color. So it's not just one pasted in color, it breaks up. So like maybe add in a little bit of walnut dust in there as well. And that breaks up the uh, pattern. Now, if I was putting a walnut bow tie in here, which I would be doing, I would get walnut dust and um, add in a little bit of cherry dust and use that to fill in the gaps. But that looks pretty good. And then what I will do is um, I can plane this off and it should look lovely. Hang on a second. So let me show you with the dust and stuff in the glue around the edges. So it looks a little sloppy around there, but once it gets cleaned up and that stuff gets dried in, it should look nice and clean in there. So I'm just trying to get that cleaned up in there. Um, and yeah, what I can do is get my, get my uh, plane out here. Grab my, my plane and I'm not going to really worry about this one looking fantastic. I'm just going to go ahead and take this down.
just so you can see what it looks like. And I chipped this off, unfortunately. Chipped a corner of it, which is not great, unfortunately, but not the end of the world. Some of that sawdust, almost flat. And then what I would do is just, ooh, I hit the table. All right, I don't want to. I don't want to sand it into the table. Um, then I would just take some sandpaper and clean this up. In fact, I will go ahead and grab my small sander here. Maybe, actually, yeah. What's on here? Something fine. Yeah, I will use the big sander because it's just easier and it has the dust hose hooked up to it. So let's do this. Let me uh, let me plug this in. And we'll just finish this off just to look at it and see what it looks like. Okay. I'm going to put my ears on. I mean, honestly, for an underside of a table, I mean, come on, that's pretty good, right? I did nick this part here a little bit or whatever, but if you look at the bow tie, and I still, I chipped this with the planer, uh, with my hand plane, so not great, but you can see where that sawdust really got into these edges and filled in these cracks where it was a little bit loose, especially right in here right in here. And I would do a better job of actually filling those in too. I didn't do a great job, I just used my finger. I would work that sawdust into the cracks a little bit better, but um, pretty good. And if this is gonna be on the underside of a table, that's not bad at all. Uh, and that is, if you remember, this is about a half inch thick, so it's running all the way down to here. I mean, it's got that much thickness on it. Um, and that is gonna provide the stability in the table to keep those cracks from getting larger over time, which is exactly what we don't want to happen. We do not want those cracks getting bigger because they're gonna be filled with epoxy. And then that would make me sad. So let me go put this over here. And uh, let's see what's going on in the Check the world of streaming here. Why do I have a? I don't even know if I have a window open for my Twitch. I I did. I thought. I don't see my Twitch. Let me open my Twitch window here. Twitch, open up. Sorry, I think I accidentally closed my Twitch window a little earlier. And everything takes so long. All right. Do, 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 do. Wow. Can we go a little bit slower? That would be awesome. Thank you. Twitch is like so janky slow. I'm not sure why. Just need to go to my channel and open up. All right, thank you. I just want to make sure it's, it's, uh, it is, it's muted. Just want to make sure it was muted. 
All right. Okay. All right. Finally, it filled in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set up, I think, to do this on here. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to use a bow tie on the bottom that is this size. I mean, that's not a bad size bow tie um, when you look at it um, in terms of this crack. I think that's pretty good. I need to do a couple of these in here. I definitely need to do a couple of these inside of here um, just to, I may need to do three of them. Um, this has already been flattened down right here. Um, I did this, like I said, Friday, I put this back on my flattening sled because it had twisted over time, but it is now pretty flat to the point where I feel confident using this template on here. You can see there's no twisting or anything. I could, I could secure this template onto here and definitely, I don't think I want to use a gigantic bow tie. I definitely think this is it or this smaller one right here. Um, if I look at the actual bow tie size and what it looks like inside here, I can kind of figure out how much smaller it's going to be um, than the actual um, template size. So if I use this one template right here, it's going to run like I'm just going to draw it in here a little bit, kind of estimate how much room I lose from doing it on the thing here. So about like this, it's about that far apart. Just so I can kind of get a rough estimate to see if it's big enough. Um, I think I'm going to go with the bigger one, that, like the one we just did. Um, it's just going to give me, it's going to give me more room to work with. I think that's going to be the way to go. I think that's definitely a better fit for this. Um, Cause this is going to be, how wide is, how long is this bow tie right here is all told when it's cut. The bow tie is 3.2 inches. So I did a pretty good job of estimating that. Um, 3.2 inches on here is gonna be enough to span this crack and provide some stability. The only one I worry about is like if I do one right here, um, which I think I need to do one across here as well. And if I put this across here, yeah. I think I need I think I need one across this this area as well. So I need one here. I'm gonna draw this in real quick. Just just for reference points for myself. Just so I can see where I'm putting these things. And then I'll do another one right here. And I think I, I need to run some, like there's a lot of cracks on here, or this crack is very long. So I, I definitely want to, oh, I need to have it flipped over, that's why it's doing that. Um, I definitely need to have this set up so that I'm gonna get, there we go. Need maximum, uh, maximum stability. So I might do four bow ties on the back here just to keep this in check, I might just do four bow ties on here. Ah, oh, jeez. Can I get, there we go. Let me draw this out here, see what I'm gonna get. Cause I kind of have a, an estimate now of how far inside of the template this runs. So I can kind of rough it out a little bit. So one, two, three, four. And then across here, I've got this thing right here. And I can do a smaller one on here. I think I can do a small one on here just to kind of keep this in check as well. So let me run this 
scenario on here. So I could run one on here because this is got a crack. It's not as prevalent on the top. It's actually really small on the top, but over time, we don't want that opening up, right? So we can control these cracks. Um, keep this wood from spreading apart. I think we'll be in good shape. I think I do want to keep these in a line though. So I definitely want a line when I'm putting these on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure out a line to try to keep these going in a straight line. So that when I put this template down, it's always lined up um, on this one plane so that they will be, they'll look nice at least along the bottom. So I'm just gonna run this line and that way I can use this line to line up the template on here for these three right here. And that way it'll look nice and kind of neat and organized and not janky, which is what it kind of looks like right now. So there, that would be like right here. And then I need one over here. Now I'll put that on the line again. And then one more down here and put that on the line again. And it, it just keeps them in a row and keeps them looking nice. All right. Um, now I could also, like I said, I've got this material right here. I can cut the bow ties out on this material right here. This is um, basically really nice uh, walnut. I don't need it this thick though. Now I'm thinking if I should leave it like it is or resaw this stuff down to get a thinner stock. Just kind of saw this in half so I'm not working with the full thickness here. And I might do that um, because these are pretty thick. This is uh, 1.3 inches. So two, 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 five, six, 75, I guess. This is where I want to take this to, 675. I cut it in half. Somewhere around here. And mark that in half. Work. Um, and I could resaw this wood and then cut all of my pieces out of this stock. Um, and I would cut it out of, so I can show you on here. If you look right here, this actually is a pith running through the whole piece of wood right here. So this, this section right here, I would not cut out of this swath right here, but all of this right here is all quarter sawn wood, which means it's super stable. Um, it would give me lateral grain. So the grain is running, the grain on this piece right here is running this way, okay? I want the grain from my bow tie running perpendicular to that. And this is perfectly straight grain right here, which would provide me basically the most stability that I can get to this, to this system or to this uh, area right here. Um, the big question I have is how far up I want to take this particular one right here. If I want to go a little bit further spaced on here, um, just, to, just to provide right up in this area where it's cracking here. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put one here. I'm going to put one like here and then one. So I'm going to space these out as best I can. Um, but I am going to use a line, a straight line to line up my, my router uh, template because I want that to be, I want them to all be in a row. And I think that'll look nice, kind of lined up. Um, but like I said, this is the underside of the table. So it's going to get uh, a finished sand. But I can go ahead and start this process now. Um, I can get a couple of them done anyway. So let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to do one of them. How about that? Let's just stop goofing off here. Let's go ahead and do one of these. I'm going to go ahead and get this template knocked down on here. So I'm going to put tape on these two sides right here just to hold, 
hold it in place. Um, the benefit of this is that I've got a large piece of wood to work with. Um, now the only thing I will say is that I do have some ridges and stuff from where I from where I did the uh, flattening the other day. There's a few ridges in here, and I'm thinking I might want to, and I can feel them. I might want to hit this with my sander before I get into that. Um, I really didn't want to do that, but I think I would be doing myself a disservice if I did not at least hit this with some 60 and 80 to clean up the um, those marks on there and make it as flat as possible before I do this. So I've got, eh, you know what, screw this. It's an old piece of 60. Let me get a fresh 60 on here. Get a fresh 60. Let's just do it right. Fresh 60 on here. And that will make short work of this. And then we'll come back and make this nice and clean. Now it should not move this table. It's, it's a stout freaking table, but I think I'm going to put a clamp on here just to be secure because I'm going to use it in rotary mode and rotary mode is like, ah, uh, it's, it's heavy duty. So we're going to use it in, well, it's turbo mode, but, um, the other thing is, hang on a second. I got this cord wrapped up in my hose. Just love when things are messy. Holy crud, messy, 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 messy. Okay. Can we wrap this up around here maybe? There we go. Let's get things kind of a little tidy underneath the scenes here. I know you can't see it, but it makes a big difference for me when I'm walking around all these hoses and stuff. All right, I'm gonna hit this area with the 60, um, this area that I'm gonna do stuff because I'm gonna get rid of this scallop area right here. It is a little scalloped and that's not gonna work out well for what we want uh, because we want this to be flat when I put that template on there so that it has good adhesion and doesn't shift. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this real quick here. We're in turbo. Turbo mode, baby. Flat, 
flat, flat. It is, it is a beast. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit this with some 80 real quick just to smooth it out because um, that was 60. Um, let me see what this 80 looks like. Uh, you know, let's not be cheap skates. Let's just grab a new piece of paper, right? I mean, we're only as good as the result we're going to get. And I'm going to put a fresh piece of 80 on here. And then this will actually make it pretty darn smooth. And all we'd need to do is hit it with some 120 to finish it up. But I'm going to go ahead and take it off a of turbo, put it on regular mode, hit this with the uh, 80, get it smooth. So we have a nice smooth surface to uh, attach the template to. And then we can get busy. smooth that feels nice all right and and hopefully you can see that um the the area that i knocked off here i just flattened this on friday and if you look at the difference in color between here and here where i just hit it with that sander look how much this stuff oxidizes just leaving it out that's just that's just built up over the weekend so this wood cherry really does oxidize and gets a really rich, darker color um, the longer it sits out. Now it doesn't just keep getting darker and darker, but it does, it does oxidize and it does get this darker cherry color that you're kind of used to. And it does get a little bit lighter when you hit it with the sandpaper and the planers and everything else. Um, but that is certainly flat enough now for me to apply. I'm just gonna put this down and check it. Um, I mean, that's a great surface for me to work with. Now, I do want to come back and redo my line that I had established for, um, for doing that. See, this, uh, this is kind of getting nicked up. This one's kind of bothering me. It's kind of getting nicked up a little bit here, this template edge. And it really needs to be nice and clean. But it uses the same edge for everything, so I guess it doesn't really matter. All right, I'm going to get my pencil here and my straight edge ruler and just figure out where I want these to run and then draw a line on here so that everything runs in a straight line. So that when I line up this template down the line, I'm going to do one down here. And then I'll do one down here. And then I'll do one in the middle, but I'll, I'll figure out where that needs to be between those two. All right. Um, and that being said, I can also apply uh, some tape. So I will put tape here in a piece here. Okay, so I'm gonna put some tape on these two sides. Because like I said, you know, most important, you do not want your template moving while you're routing. That's bad. Very, very bad. Very, very bad. So, put this here and here. 
Okay, and peel off my tape. If I can find my tools that I use for that, there we go. One. Ooh. So you just kind of catch the edge with the tip of a knife or a scissors or a nail or something. And it usually comes up pretty clean. Three, four, okay. Now I just need to figure out exactly where I want to put this. This is cleaned off so that there's no dust residue that's going to allow this to not stick. I'm going to put this right on my line there. And I think that is probably a good spot right there. So I'm going to get this lined up. Then I will apply pressure. <clears throat> I got pressure applied and this thing is stuck down. It's not moving anywhere and I can route this out. Um, then I can figure out how thick, how deep I want this to go. I think about the actual And look at something here. So this acrylic that I'm using here is basically a quarter of an inch thick. So my depth will be just above my little collar here, which by the way, I need to put the big collar on here to make this cut. So the big collar goes on like that. Um, and I think I'm going to make this a little bit less. So I'm going to open this up because that way it gives me when I'm cutting out my stuff. So I'm going to set this, set this to zero for right now. here, lock that in, and then I'm gonna screw this down until it touches that maybe. There we go. All right, so that will hit. And if I screw this all the way up, it'll come back. All right, so that's gonna be the depth. So when I go into here, that'll work. All right, you know what? Let's make one, shall we? So like I said, this does not need to be as perfect as the actual <clears throat> bow tie itself because we're just making a pocket. So we can just work around the inside. I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. I'll go partly and then go down and work it in, in increments. All right. <laughs>
had a little little equipment issue here. Yeah, this came unscrewed from my thing here, which it's not supposed to do. Not sure why it did. Get back up on there. Oh, I, I took it down too far, that's why. Okay, well, anyway. Uh, let me clean this pocket out and then I'll continue because it gets a little jammed up with all the dust in there. Hey, now we'll just keep cleaning it out. All right, clean this out. I just have one little spot here that I need to clean. So that's pretty good. This one done and then we can find it. <laughs> there it is, okay. Yeah. All right, now I can go a little deeper. Let me uh, set this just a little deeper here. Okay, and I'm just gonna tip this in. Oh, shoot, I'm just losing things everywhere. This goes on here. Okay, all right. Actually, you know what, I'm just gonna plunge that down and that way I can raise this up and then plunge into that spot. It's a little easier that way, all right.
All right, let's see what we got here. Clean this up a little bit. Okay, a few, a few chunky spots in here still we got to clean up, but doing pretty good. A couple more little spots here, right around the edges. Okay. Now I'm going to do a depth check just to see what I've got for thickness on this cut so far. Just let's see how thick we are. So I'm measuring 0.4155, so almost a half an inch thick, four tenths of an inch. It's pretty good. I think I'd like to go just a little bit thicker than that though. Um, because like I said, the whole point of these is that we are trying to structurally bind these two pieces of wood. These are basically two pieces, or they're going to act as two pieces if we don't bind them together as one. And uh, so if I do this right, um, and my void gets bigger as I go down too. So, all right, let's do... A tiny bit deeper here so what I can do is just go down to my depth stop and I can loosen this and then lower this just a little bit it gives me just a little bit more space in there to work with and uh, I think from there we'll have a really good place to go from all right Yeah. Clean this out. A little bit more clean up under here. I didn't go much deeper on here, just a little bit, but there is some areas that I need to clean up over in the top here.
think that gets it for this one. All right, and that actually gives me a really nice pocket here for this. Um, I, there's a couple little areas that need, um, what do I do with that nice sharp chisel here? There's a couple areas that just have a couple little flakes in there that I can clean up with a nice sharp chisel just to get that bottom nice and smooth. And that looks really nice. Make sure the corners are nice and clean. But that looks really nice. That's a good starting one. And for a depth wise, I took that down to, um, it's now so 0.5 inches. So it's a half inch deep. And uh, I'm going to get my, <laughs> got to get my template up. I did a good job of securing it. There we go. All right, and here's a little tip. Don't use the same tape when you, if you're making more than one, change your tape because I guarantee you, you're going to lose adhesion. Once you remove this, if you try to stick it back down, you're going to lose some adhesion and it's going to fail on you in the worst possible moment. Don't ask me how I know, just take that as a probability, not a possibility. All right. And I'm just gonna clean off all this gunky stuff on here. That gunk from my tape on here. Don't want the gunk. All right, so that is the first one done. And it turned out really nice. You can see that one in your camera view right there. Um, and what I'm going to do, I've got this line that I put up here. I'll follow that all the way down this way. And I'm going to put another one um, right down here at this end of the crack. Um, it'll be in line with this one. And uh, when I get that one done, then I will space out evenly between the two kind of figure out how much distance to, to find a center line um, and then put one right in the middle of both of those. But I've got this line drawn on here, which allows me to put that template in the same, along this, the same plane and keep them nice and straight, which will, you know, kind of, kind of make them look a little nicer, not so skewed and random and whatever. Um, all right, I'm going to get some more tape and we're going to put this one down. And I think, I think this one's going to go right here. Um, and this one's going to cover a lot more of that large crack area. So this is an important one. I mean, they're all important because these are definitely needed in order to keep this wood from moving but I need to get the spacing right on this one because it does span a crack and I want to make sure that I'm going to get a good position on it. And I want to also look and see where I'm going to put my other piece of tape. I'm going to put a piece of tape right here because the end of it hangs off. So I can't put it where I did the last time, but I can put one right here. And then let me see where I want to put that last piece of tape on here. This right here. So I got a piece of tape here. I can put a piece of tape up here and that should hold it. So I'll put a piece of tape up on this side. And I'm really going to need to order some more of this tape because I'm almost out and I use it all the time. I do love this tape. All right. Looking for my tools. 
Now this, I'm going to set, I've, I've got a stop block set up here. I'm not going to move that. So I know that these will be routed to the same depth. Um, so I want to keep that router stop, that plunge stop set to the same spot for all of these. So I'm just going to, when I plunge down, I won't plunge all the way. I'll just do a partial plunge. Um, and now we use that stop as my final depth to make sure that these are all the same depth. So if you don't have a plunge router, I would say it's one of those tools that you don't use it a lot, but man, when you need it, it is a handy thing to have. Because if you're having to do anything where you're routing into a piece of wood, not from an edge, but down into it, you don't want to have to like be tipping your bit into that wood. It's just a, not a great way to work. Um, so I would say, yeah, definitely if it's, if you don't have one, um, but if you have a router, look into it. They may actually have an accessory plunge base that you could purchase. That's what I did for this. The, uh, I had the Colt router. This is, is this a Colt? Yeah, it's a Colt. Um, I had this little Bosch Colt router and they make a router plunge accessory for it. And I found, did I order the plunge new? I might've actually ordered the plunger new, the plunge accessory new. Um, I can't remember. I think this was new and I actually had bought the router used from somebody on eBay. So, you know, you can, you can, mix and match um make sure it's tight so you don't have to uh you don't you don't have to buy everything all at the same time I, like i said i bought the router because i just it's handy to have a, a trim router like this for doing the edges of tabletops and stuff like that instead of using a router table but because i like to do this inlay stuff having this little plunge base oh my gosh it's such a game changer so I say, you know, you don't have to buy them together. You can buy them at separate times. I, uh, my, I can tell I need to vacuum out because it gets hard to move things around because it's so full of dust chips at that point. All right, let's get the other first half of this cleaned out because remember this is basically divided in two because of the crack down the middle.
Okay, clean out this other half. Just a couple little pieces left on this level, then I can move on. I've had some bigger chip outs on here just because of the nature of this wood being flaky along this crack. All right. They all good there. I can go ahead and let me just uh, clean up this one little. There we go. Little chippy spots in here. And then I'm going to do the final depth plunge in here. But um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. This uh, crack has kind of like a an angled chip out to it. So it's going to be interesting because the the uh, the bow tie will actually protrude up a little bit from the crack area, but that's okay. Like I said, bottom, not top. So we're good. All right, let's go ahead and make our final plunge here, I think. And then we'll clean up the rest of this and get it down to the final, final depth on this one.
right, so this one is now done. I'm just going to clean up a couple of the little tiny areas that the router bit missed because, well, I'm using an eighth inch router bit to clean out a big pocket. And yeah, sometimes you just miss a couple little pieces, but for the most part, it hit everything here. I'm just using my finger to find stuff right here. But I think we're good. <clears throat> All right, and then I can take template off. All right, the, there is two of these now done. And then the last one will go in the middle of them. So I need to kind of measure these things first before I <clears throat> go whittling out the, the third one here. I'm still debating if I need to put one down here. Um, I might just do one in the top instead of in the bottom. I think uh, these three that I'm doing right here are going to provide a lot of structural integrity to secure this crack. Because remember, kids, crack is whack. Thank you for those words of wisdom, Whitney Houston. All right. So what I need to do is find out a little measuring here. Let's just measure from this edge to this edge is uh, almost seven and a half, seven and five eighths. So that would be three in a half plus a 16 or three in okay whatever so three and a half is seven plus a quarter plus a sixteenth would be right here is the middle and i'm just going to take this and just kind of look and see if i put that in the middle i mean it doesn't have to be perfect I just want it to be close. So that'll be right there. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, let's uh, get some more tape on here and we'll just do this last one. And then I think uh, from there, I will call it a day and then we can do the, uh, the bow ties on Friday and get those in there and secured and glued in. Uh, just another look at that right there is what we're looking at. So that's about the size bow tie we're making right there. I, they look, I mean, come on, that looks pretty nice, right? I mean, you got to admit that looks pretty cool. Uh, and when you think that thing goes in there half an inch, <clears throat> it's providing a lot of stability to that area. All right. Tape. <sighs> Ouch. That's very sharp edge though. <laughs> Very sharp edge. Let's just take my hand off. Uh, I'm gonna put the tape down here. So let's get some more of this. Always good to have a pair of shop scissors. Don't use your spouse or significant other scissors in the shop. They will not be happy with you. Don't grab the kitchen shears and come out here and use them in a the shop. Go to Walmart, or I think I got these at, um, where did I get these at? Uh, Harbor Freight for a couple of bucks. Get yourself a pair of scissors from Harbor Freight or something. Use them in a shop. Don't, uh, don't anger your significant other by using the scissors. Okay, I need to take that way down like that. All right, and let me find the best place to put these other pieces of tape to secure them. So if this is going to go here, that I need a piece of tape. I can put, hmm, put a piece of tape here and a piece of tape here. That ought to make it pretty secure. So here and here.
I know sometimes it's tempting to just grab the, the kitchen scissors or something or the ones that, you know, that they use for sewing because they're sharp and they cut really well. But yeah, you are, you are playing with fire, my man. I'm, that's all I'm saying. Or my woman, whichever, you know, if somebody has a pair of scissors that is dedicated to a purpose and you use them in your shop, ah, heaven help you. That's why I bought these. <clears throat> All right, you're being a pain. Thank you. There we go. Would you stick? Sometimes I look really good doing this, and sometimes it just makes me look foolish. There we go. There we go. All right, now, last thing, like I said, I want to get this lined up, and I want to have it on my line up top. And then I want it centered on that mark that I made that is going to put it right between those two. Right there seems to be there and right there. All right. That seems to be the good location. Once again, we're not going to go down to our full depth. We will just go part way, clean it out, probably do two or three different, probably three. Um, this is pretty, pretty hard wood. We don't want to kill our bit. So let me get down to the surface. Okay. Punch down a little bit from there. All right, here we go.
Last one. Here we go. All right. That should be all. Oh, I missed a little bit, but hang on. I think I can get this with my chisel. Shouldn't be a problem. I mean, it's just little teeny pieces of wood, so I can usually clean those out with a chisel. If it's sharp, just off the floor of the of the cut there. So nothing too bad. That actually is really nice. I'm gonna clean this out one more time with the vacuum. All right, then 
try to get my template off of here. Ah, there we go. And voila, there are our three um, basically holes for our, oh God, it's stuck really, really well. Um, so we've got our three, I don't know what you call them, holes or, or um, pockets for our bow ties. And as I said, the bow ties are going to be cut out of walnut because it'll just look nice and it's a nice contrasting color. And also because the legs are going to be walnut, so why not, right? It'll just look good. We will use the same, um, the same pattern right here when we get ready to do the, uh, the actual inlays, but we will take the collar off of the, uh, the router, so there is a collar up on top here that rides inside of this template. When we take the collar off, it allows it to shift over by an eighth of an inch. That will give us a cutout that fits exactly inside of our pocket there. And by exactly, I'm laying pretty exactly. Not, not perfect, but it's pretty exact. And if we uh, get ourselves some nice walnut dust and some glue, and such, um, we can make those look pretty spiffy. So I am very happy with the way these turned out. Um, as I said, I'm probably gonna do one here um, because there is a crack. Um, so I wanna do one there. Let me move this stuff over real quick here and that way I can kind of tip this up and show you. Ah, let me uh, put the router away here for a second. And I'm just going to set it on the floor out of the way so it doesn't get knocked over. And my computer needs to move because, well, it's just going to be in the way. Um, and then this piece of wood that I'm going to use is in the way, so we're going to move it. And this ruler is in the way. Anyway, just getting everything out of the way here. And then I'll unclamp this and show you a better view of what we've got. Let me move this clamp over to my workbench here. Okay, so here is our three. And if you look and see, if I put this on here, you'll see that they actually line up. That's right. Ow! Something just tipped over and hit me in the shins. But they line up in a perfect line on that ruler. And that's what I was after was something that looked a little bit more kind of I don't know, just a little bit more in line, a little bit more straight and orderly instead of just kind of crisscrossing in there. I wanted them to be placed evenly in there. I was thinking of putting one here, but um, I think I'm not going to do that. This will be, be filled with epoxy anyway. Um, all of this will get filled with epoxy. Um, so I will plant these in and probably do the ones on the top and then fill in all the voids with the epoxy once that is, um, once these are in and glued in and set and leveled down. Then I'll do the epoxy fills on these. Um, but I'm gonna put one here because there is a crack. Let me lower it down right here so you can see right here, there is a crack that goes across and it doesn't look as bad on the other side. So if I flip this over, right here, you can't really see, but there is just a tiny crack right there, but I do not want that opening up over time. Um, the other ones up here on top, this larger area here, um, I might put a bow tie across here and a bow tie, maybe a couple of bow ties here and here, and then one right here. And then that should provide me with enough. I don't know if I'll go as deep, um, but, uh, I think that will provide the stability and, you know, the aesthetic pleasantness of a bow tie, a Dutchman, butterfly, whatever your preferred word is for that. Um, but it'll make it all look really nice. Hang on a second, I've got some sawdust that came through. Uh, when I do the epoxy, it's going to be black epoxy that's going to fill this area. So um, I also have a crack right here. And 
it concerns me a little bit. It's a little bit of checking that I think I can fill that with epoxy on the edge there and it should be okay. But um, yeah, we'll get, we'll get some bow ties, probably the same size. We'll get a bow tie right here. We'll get a bow tie right here and then we'll do one right here. I think we will do another one right here just, just to kind of equalize all of this wood inside here. And also, you know, the other thing is, it means I don't have to have as much epoxy because the more solid wood area I have, the less epoxy I actually need, which is not a bad thing because epoxy, not cheap. Um, the epoxy is going to get stained or not stained, but dyed black. Um, I'll just use my trans tint dye and make it black. And so this will all be black lines through there, which I'm okay with. Um, I kind of, you know, I, it, I'd rather have it that way. I don't want to do clear because clear is a pain because you almost always end up with bubbles and things like that that you just can't get out. And so I'd rather go black and, um, you know, some people like to go, oh, well, they put like colored like blue tint with swirl, cloudy, cloud swirly things and such. And my toe is cramping and ouch, ouch, stop it. Ah, I have to bend my toes back. But um, I, I just, I don't like that um, for this. This isn't a river table. Um, this is just a slab table that just needs to be secured with the epoxy. I mean, I don't have to do the epoxy. I could just do the, the bow ties in there, but I just don't like having those voids in the tabletop. Um, I think it will just look nicer if they are filled in. Um, the only thing I have to worry about is how I'm going to epoxy this corner right here. So I'm going to have to build up like a dam or something to fill this edge of the table right here. Um, but I'll, that, I'll work on that. Um, maybe I'll get a couple of pieces of wood that can be on here and have like packing tape or something and make a corner and have them, I don't know, clamped on here somehow or I, I don't know what I'll do. We'll figure something out and uh, we will make a corner for this. Actually, this is at an angle, so that makes life a lot harder. But um, we will get it all done. Um, like I said, I, I do need it to be straight flat though. So, um, but uh, yeah, this is going to look nice when it's done. I'm just fingers crossed. I, I keep saying that, but I think it'll look nice. All right. What a time we got. 1.45. We went along today, but we weren't here on Wednesday or on Wednesday, on Monday. So we got a little extra time today and we did get those uh, pockets done. And Friday, I'll go ahead and get the wood set up and ready. You know, tomorrow I'll come out here and uh, mill some of these to a little bit thinner stock, make life a little easier when we're cutting these. And, um, and then we can uh, go ahead and cut some bow ties. I have a lot of it, so if they, do, if they get screwed up, I can always cut some more. But I think with this, with this template, I think we'll be okay to cut these things. And uh, like I said, all I need to do is get myself some walnut dust, which is not a big deal. I can get walnut dust. And once we have the walnut dust and the bow ties cut, or vice versa, um, we can glue those things into the bottom, get them set, and then we'll start working on the top. And once that's all in, then it will be time to clean up the edges and pour the epoxy. And uh, yeah, I don't know how much epoxy I'm going to need though, because it, it, it doesn't look like it's that big of a void, but that's where it gets really, really misleading. So I probably will want to buy another set of epoxy just to have one on hand that I can mix up an extra batch to pour it in there. Um, Anywho, thank you for watching. Thanks for stopping by. Had a little New Zealand visit today, which was really awesome. And uh, I just think that's so cool when people come from other parts of the world and check out my stream. So uh, be sure to uh, come back on Friday. If you haven't, you know, you can subscribe and follow and all those things and turn the notifications on and you'll know when I'm on. But uh, you can also just tune in from 11 until 1.30ish. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Eastern Standard Time. And uh, I will be here working on this thing or some other stuff, you know.
just depends. So have a great day. Come back to see me Friday. We'll uh, jump into the weekend with some bow ties, part two. And uh, yeah, it should be fun. Take care. See you then.